Now I know we we look around here this morning. Did you did you realize that this group that we have this morning is more people than prob, over probably two thirds of the churches in this nation don't even have this many people on a typical Sunday morning. The average size church in America is seventy one people. The average size. Now you got some big old huge churches, but for every one huge church, you got 500 little small ones, see, that don't even come close to having 50 people. I've got a number of friends that pastor churches that's got 10, 12, 15, 8, you know, and that's, uh, you know, and that's, that's their congregation. So we don't know how blessed we really are to be able to share with one another and bless one another and just uh, see what the Lord's doing in our lives, how awesome it is. And I, I have purpose this morning not to, not to hold you long because I know we've got to make a trip and a lot of you've got places you're going to have to go and we want you to do that. But at the same time, we, we did want to take time to honor the Lord today and uh, give praise to his name on his birthday. So... While they're passing the offering plate, I'm going to go ahead and read our scripture. I'm in Luke chapter 2, and I want to share with you a little bit today about the shepherds. I've really been impressed this year in thinking about the shepherds. Have you ever thought about why? Have you ever thought about why or how did God decide to reveal the good news of the birth of the Messiah, how in the world did it end up the shepherds are the first ones to get the news? Because when you ordinarily think about something as big as God's Son coming to the earth, have you ever thought about, well, well, well who should get the news first? Or who should, who should be the very first people to hear the news that God had put a son on the earth. And when you stop to think about that, it really is a powerful thought as to how that came about. Well, let's read Luke chapter 2, and I want to start reading in verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Isn't it amazing that the first thing God says to people is fear not? And how many of us live our lives literally fearing something? fearing being laid off from our job, fearing that our children won't turn out to be the kind of people that we would want them to be, fearing that we wouldn't live to be able to see them grown, all kinds of fears that we face. And the very first thing that God would say to the world is fear not. Jesus told his disciples one time, let not your hearts be troubled. And he said, here's why. If you believe in God, believe also in me. That's, and that's why you don't have to let your heart be troubled. And I know we, have a, we feel like a lot of reason to be troubled by a lot of things. But the thing we need to remember is God's still in control. Amen. He's still on the throne. And his desire is still for us to be blessed and for our worship be, to be directed Toward him, so I don't want to. I don't want to belabor the point, but I wanted you to see that. And he said, "Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you, talking to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you." You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, notice it didn't say singing, 
We usually think about angels singing. I'm trying to recall, I don't really recall a scripture that says that angels sing. They're praising God. Now, we like to think about that. Oh, he can sing like an angel. That's just an interesting tidbit for you to think about. Go home and get your Bible and prove me wrong on. But he said, they were praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now notice that's interesting there. They wondered at the things the shepherds told them. Because that's an indication of the reputation of shepherds. They wondered at the things that the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. First of all, the shepherds were religious outcasts. They were not part of what would be considered the higher echelon of Bible scholars or learned scribes who had studied scriptures and who were very well aware of the religious calendar and what to look for for the birth of the child. They were about the last people you would ever think that would even care about whether or not uh, a Messiah would be born or would come into the world. Now, understand that everybody who lived uh, in Jerusalem or in that area or who were Jewish was looking forward to the birth of a, of a Messiah, a Messiah that would deliver them, that would be able to put them in a position with God as the promised holy people that they had been looking for and praying for for all this time. But these shepherds were borderline social outcasts. Now think about it. They really didn't have a home. They lived outside all the time. They would, they would lead their sheep into the green pastures and the clean water during the daytime. And all they could do was sit around and watch their sheep graze. All day long, they watched the sheep. Because they were afraid or, or thought perhaps that a wild animal would come out of the bushes and would uh, kill the sheep. And therefore they would uh, lose their living or their livelihood. So they spent all of their time 24-7 with the sheep. So they had really no interaction with people. You could smell them. Have you ever thought about the only place they really, I guess, could wash themselves occasionally would be when they found a stream for the sheep to, uh, to drink from. And at nighttime, they would drive the sheep into a cave and they would lie down in the door of the cave. Thank you for coming today.